Let's pray. God, we thank you that you have called us to be your disciples. Uh, disciples not just only in the church, uh, but disciples in the world that we live in. And you're looking for people who will stand in the gap for you. And God, each testimony that was shared this evening uh, makes us a little closer to following you, O oh God. And so we pray a prayer as I share whatever you have laid in my heart. Uh, it will come out alive for your people. And I thank you for the opportunity that you give us to share. And bless our time together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It looks like I can't even breathe. Right? If I breathe heavily, it makes a lot of noise. <clears throat> Last time when we met, uh, we talked a little bit about discipleship, uh, if you know. And I, <clears throat> I just want to say, you know, usually uh, guest preachers don't get invited uh, two consecutive Sundays. And <laughs> you've invited me in two consecutive Sundays, and I just want to say thank you. Uh, Frank, uh, I, I kind of resonate with you uh, because I do the same thing, and I ask my congregation to come for a prayer. Uh, I still struggle with it. Uh, so I can understand where you are coming from, uh, and I and I understand you too. It's not that it, you know, sometimes it's it's it takes a little bit of a effort on our part to do this thing. So, uh, but you know uh, what Frank said was right. Uh, when when we bend our knees, uh, the Satan has absolutely no power. Uh, we can talk a whole lot, uh, but there is one thing that the Satan can never stand is when a believer bends his knees. And when, uh, if you look at uh, some of the great names in, in ministry or in missions, and if you see their knees, it'll be bruised, it'll be calloused, because they have spent so much time in prayer. And God does amazing things in answer to prayer. Um, and he, small things, big things, uh, things that you don't even believe that God can do. And when we come to those, uh, what do we call it as, uh, uh, those walls in our lives, uh, God begins to open up things just because we have bent our knees before him. Uh, sometimes, uh, you know, in our homes, we see this plaque uh, growing up uh, in Madurai. And, you know, we see this plaque in our homes which says, prayer changes things. Uh, prayer doesn't change things sometimes. Prayer changes us for things. Things will remain the same. But your and my attitude towards that particular thing absolutely changes because God has changed us from inside out. And I think it's very important. Uh, don't go to God in prayer. and Don't go to God and say, God, I want... Go and tell Him. But leave that space for God to do the change in you. And see, then you see what God... See what God can do. And even for this church, even for this church, uh, pray for God's purposes to be fulfilled in this church. And allow, allow God to do it. And don't hold Him down. And God has amazing plan. And you and I can only think of two steps. We can only, our, our desire for this church is this big. But God's desire for this church is too big for us to handle. And if we, if we let ourselves loose into God's presence, see what God can do. Um, I think Edward Kavita, right? Uh, Edward's... Uh, Anita, Anita. Um, I, 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 I kind of hear your, um, your struggles. Um, when I read Deuteronomy, you know, the, the Deuteronomy that was read, if you, if you go and read all of Deuteronomy, uh, Deuteronomy is a farewell speech. It's a farewell speech uh, that uh, Moses gives to the people of Israel. And he is uh, traveled with one generation and that generation has completely died. And there is a new generation that's standing up and are now uh, going to enter the promised land. Um, Moses realizes that only so far he can go with that generation. And he has to just commit that generation into God's hand. And uh, what you did was right. You just committed your daughter into God's hand. 
because there is only you and I can do so much. For folks, if you are here, you have little children and you're thinking you have a long way off, guess what? That time will come when you have to let go of your children. And at that time, you know, let them go. But let God do what God is going to do in their lives. Because God has a, has a, a bigger plan for your children. And just allow them and see what God can do. Um, that's what Moses does. But don't forget to tell them. You know, when we dropped off our son at the college, uh, like today, if you go, today, this week, this weekend was the dropping off week for many schools, isn't it? So we dropped off somebody two weeks ago, then we dropped off somebody yesterday. And when we dropped off, we can, you can see the parents taking the luggage inside the hut. Then, the, then there is this one-on-one -on -one conversation. And parents will say, you know, be careful, be this. And when we, when we dropped off our son, we basically told him, hey, listen, read the Bible. Pray. Go to church. And now that he's working, he's doing his internship and he's getting paid, he says, give your tithes. Like uh, Moses says to the people of Israel, do what you need to do. Uh, don't shy away from telling them. If you don't tell them, listen, nobody will tell them. So do what you are doing. Uh, but just pray and commit them to God's care and keeping and see what God can do. Okay. <laughs> this is what I wanted to share. Yesterday, last week when I came here, I talked about discipleship. And I told you a very simple definition. It's a lot of disciples in one ship. That's what discipleship is all about, very simply. And I told you that I'm using, I used commercials. I used uh, TV commercials to kind of uh, talk about uh, what is, how can we connect that to discipleship. That's what we did. Uh, sometimes I, uh, we think of, uh, you know, there is, there's no trace of God in movies. There's no trace of God in, in commercials. But there is a, a footprint of God in it. And all you have to do is have eyes to see. And last week, and I said to you, I began this whole series with this commercial from uh, MasterCard. Uh, MasterCard commercial goes this way. The boy and the father goes into the baseball game, and, the, and it says, um, popcorn, $12, soda, $7, a signed baseball bat, $45, time with your son, priceless. For every other thing, there is MasterCard. What Jesus wanted to do with his disciples when he picked them, not so much to give them skills, not to tell them what they need to do, not to tell them how to drive out demons. Only Mark says it so beautifully. You know, what Jesus wanted to do was to just hang in with them. Every chance that he got, he just hung out with them. Because that's what Mark says. If you go and read Mark, it says, he picked his disciples, and it says, so that he can be with them. I am not a, a language geek, but I like those words. What Jesus wanted to do is be with them. He didn't want to do anything. He just wanted to share his life with them. There's a great book by Sky Jatani, and this book is called With. And he talks about how God desires not to do so much for us, not to do these things, but to be with us. That's who it is, right? Emmanuel, God with us. So discipleship is just basically God with us. And I, when I concluded that session, I basically said discipleship is about relationship. It's relational. It's relational. That's what I wanted to do. But this evening, I wanted to talk about uh, something else. I think it's important. Watch this. This, this ad. It's about a two-minute ad. Watch this, and then I will talk to you. Just watch this ad. Thank you. 
That kid is Rory McElroy. That kid is Rory McElroy. Rory McElroy's greatest desire was to play with Tiger Woods. And look at what he's doing. When he's little, he watches, probably he says in that commercial, he probably would have watched all of Tiger Woods' game. Relentlessly practices. Every, every move that Tiger Woods made, he would do. And somebody asked him, what, was your, what is your only desire? And you know what he said? He said, I want to play with Tiger Woods one day. And he did. That's the game. That's the game. And when uh, Tiger Woods would, when, uh, after he heard Rory McElroy say that, somebody asked Tiger Woods, what was yours? And he said, I wanted to play with Jack Nicholas. And he did in 1980. The reason why I am saying it, discipleship is a ripple effect. Even if you think that nobody is watching you, there's somebody who is watching you. Your kids are looking at you. Is that right? The only faith, the faith is the only thing, the Christian faith is the only thing, it's always a ripple effect. The faith is just not for yourself. It needs to be passed on. Is that right? Discipleship is about that. If you look at scripture, there are so many examples of somebody who has passed on their faith. If you look at the life of Abraham, I love the story of Abraham. I love the story when Abraham takes Isaac to the sacrifice. Several years ago, there was a man in, uh, in New York City who was arrested by the Department of uh, Health and Human Services. And the reason why they arrested him was uh, because he was going to kill his son. And when the DHS walked inside and I caught hold of him and they said, why are you going to do this? You know what he said? I heard God say that to me. If DHS was there during Abraham's time, they would have taken him into custody. Here is Abraham takes his son. And if you read that story, and so beautiful, it's probably one of the most beautiful stories in all of scripture. If you read that story, look at the confidence of Abraham. Abraham is walking with two of his servants, and Isaac is carrying the wood with him, isn't it? And he tells his servants, stay here, the kid and I will go and worship. And he, he doesn't say, I will come back. You know what he says? We will come back. That's the amount of confidence that he has in this God. Now if you look at Isaac, Isaac must have thought, what kind of a father who would give his son as a sacrifice? What kind of a nonsense is this, right? But if you flip that other side over, he must have thought, what kind of a God is this that my father is willing to put his life? And then he must have said, I want to follow that God. <laughs> if this God is this amazing that my father could uh, make that decision, I want to follow that God. Think about it. That's the kind of a confidence I don't know if that flowed, if that kind of a passed on into the life of Isaac. I don't know if Isaac was his greatest father. But Isaac did do some things that were very interesting. He raised two kids, he said, Esau and Jacob. Now when Jacob uh, he's, he's, uh, he's cheated his brother Esau and he's running away. And he's, uh, even before that, when, he, when Isaac wants to bless both Esau, Esau, and Isaac, Esau and Jacob, and he tells them, you, know, you, you go and hunt and bring an animal, right? bring a stew and feed me and I will bless you. And so, as usual, mothers play the good, good part of it, isn't it? She says to the son, hey, no, don't worry, I'll get the stew ready. We'll go and get all the blessing. And if you go back and read that scripture, it's beautiful. I'll tell you why. 
Because uh, Isaac is kneeling down and Jacob comes. Jacob is kneeling down before Isaac. And uh, Isaac asks him, how come you got this so quickly? How come you hunted this so quickly? And you know what Jacob says? It's your God. He doesn't even say, because at this time Jacob doesn't know this Yahweh. Doesn't know it. But look at it, that's good news, isn't it? Even when you and I don't know this God personally, this God knows you. Amen? That's what he says, your God. So I don't know if Jacob had uh, kind of uh, did a good job on Isaac, uh, if Isaac did a good job on Jacob, but Jacob kind of forgotten this idea of this God, isn't it? Folks, this must be passed on. And again, there are so many other examples. Elijah passing on the mantle to Elisha. He wanted a double portion of that. That's what he said, I want a double portion. And he gets it. I also love the story of uh, Eli. Uh, Eli didn't do a good job. He had two sons, he didn't do a good job. But look at it. There's a little Samuel in chapter 2, chapter 3. Little Samuel is in the, in the temple of Eli. And he's, he's sitting down there and he... And again, you go back and read that scripture so beautifully. You know what it says? At that time, the word of God was rare. That's what it says. The word of God was rare. And Samuel did not know this God. That's what it says. Did not know this God. And what does he do? He says, he comes to Eli that night and he says, I hear something. What do I do? And by this time, Eli knows. What does Eli know? That God is calling him. And so what does he say to him? The next time you hear that voice, say to that voice, this is your servant listening. God, you speak. And oftentimes, what do we do? God, I am speaking. You listen. But what he says, see, what happens in Eli's life is he's mentoring a kid that is not his own. It's not his own, isn't it? But he's mentoring a kid that changes the whole history of Israel. Samuel becomes the most greatest leader ever. All because of Eli, who passed on the faith to this little kid. It changed all of Israel, isn't it? Plenty of examples, folks. Plenty of examples. And today, one that comes to you from is, uh, if you have your Bibles, open with me to the Second Timothy part that I that I read to you. That they read to you. Just we look at a couple of things, and then I will close. It says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, for the sake of the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy. It says. The strange kid, or this kid I do not know. I don't think he says that, isn't it? What does he do? He says, to this Timothy, my beloved child. Yeah, sometimes God will bring people into our lives. They may not be our own. Right? They might be complete strangers. But can we pass on that fate to that kid? You and I have a, you and I have a tremendous responsibility to do that. And if you and I don't do that, it stays here. I'm being very serious. It stays here. The kingdom of God stays here. It doesn't move. But if you and I will take the time to pass on that faith, then the kingdom begins to move. That's what he says, isn't it? To my beloved child, he says, this is a, this is a kid that is, he doesn't even know. But yet he thinks it's the most important thing to do. And look at then what says, grace and mercy and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I am grateful to God, whom I worship with a clear conscience as my ancestors did, when I remember you constantly in my prayers day and night. He's writing to a church, he's writing to Timothy, and he says, Timothy, I, I remember you constantly. I pray for you. 
I pray that you will stand up for your faith. I pray that you will hold on to this faith. Because we live in a time where our faith is being tested. I hold, hope you will hold on to that faith. And he's, 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 writing to a, he's writing to somebody he doesn't even know. And then he says, recalling you, your tears, I long to see though that I may be filled with joy. And then he says, I am reminded of just not your faith. It says, I am reminded of your sincere faith. That's what it says. I remember, I, remind, I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that first lived in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now, sure I know, lives in you. Yeah, Timothy was uh, born to a, a Greek father and a Jewish mother. Now, if you are a part of a, you know, if your mother is Jewish, you immediately become Jewish. Is that right? I don't know how they would have even raised that kid. Whether he would have been taken to the temple or he would have been taken to the, the Greek temple. But look at it, what it says. The faith that was lived in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I know it lives in you. Isn't it? Folks, that's what, when you read Deuteronomy chapter 6, what does it say? It says very simply, it says, uh, tell your kids, tell them when they're waking up, tell them when they go to bed, write it on their foreheads, write it on their doorsteps, write everywhere possible. Yeah, the kids around you, folks in your home, are looking up to you. Parents, you have a tremendous responsibility. Show them. Don't talk about it. They will read through you like nothing else. If you want them to pray, you show it. If you want them to read scripture, you do it. Don't tell them. Show them. They're really looking up to you. That's what I said. This is the only faith that gets passed on. I, I began this series and I said, discipleship is about, it's a relational, isn't it? But I wanted to offer you this evening, it's just not a relational, it's generational. Amen? It's generational. If you do not pass on this faith, if you don't take the time to pass on this faith, it stays here. Moses could have just walked away from it, isn't it? But for Moses, that's what it is all about. He wanted to pass on this faith. He wanted that to happen. And I often wanted to tell you this evening, you know, God is looking to you. Children, you know, watch and learn from your parents. Watch and learn. See how they do things. And for parents who are here, let me offer this to you. We talk so much about God, but we don't live it. We talk so much about God, we talk so much about love, but we don't show it. Yeah, and your children can see right through it. They will really see. Today, there is a growing number of nuns in this world. N-O-N-E, it's not N-U-N, N-O-N-E's. The ones who don't have anything to do with the faith. Did you know there is a growing number in this country and all over the world? A growing number, they don't want anything to do with religion. It's not that they don't have anything to do with God. Let me make it very clear. It's not that they don't want anything to do with God, but they just don't want anything to do with organized religion because we say one thing and we do another. And I'm being very serious. And I'm, I'm preaching this to myself. I'm just not preaching it to you. Yeah, I am not just preaching this to you. I'm preaching this to myself because my children are looking up to me. I'm really, if you who are sitting down here, if you don't take the time to pass on this faith, the kingdom of God will stay here. God has no plan B. I'll be very clear. It's not that God is not able. 
Because God says, now I can take the stone and do something about it. Is it? But God doesn't have a plan B. God is looking for you. God is looking for you. So children, watch and learn how we do things. And for those who are parents, show them. But also, tell them. Yeah. In today's uh, lectionary reading, and it was Deuteronomy chapter 4, where Moses is standing before the people of Israel, and he says the same thing, like whatever he says, he says the same thing. He says, uh, in, in all of Deuteronomy, there's only one word that keeps repeating over and over again. It's this word, remember. Remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. Remember uh, the alien when you come into this land. Remember, remember. And it says, a Hebrew scholar says, 298 times. 298 times it appears in Hebrew scripture, the word remember. It's such a key word in the life of the people of Israel. Is that right? Now, if you go and read chapter 4, it says very simply, he says to them, right? And if you go and read chapter 1 to 3 before you come to chapter 4, you know what it says? He doesn't remember oftentimes when you even come to the birthdays and you want me to pray for your anniversaries and birthdays. And what I say to you, you know, remember this, what God has done. That's not what Moses wanted them to remember. You know what, it, what he wanted them to remember? He said, remember that your parents rebelled against me. Remember that they did not trust me to take them inside this promised land. Because in chapter 1, God picks, God picks those, Moses picks those 12 guys to go into the promised land. Only two of them came saying that we can take over this land. Ten completely denied it. And God says, hey, listen, trust me, I'm going to do this. Yeah. What, does they do? what do they do? They completely did not trust God. So Moses wanted them to remember the rebellion of their parents. Moses wanted them to remember that they did not trust God enough. Yeah, Moses reminded them that they complained when they did not have food to eat and water to drink. But he doesn't stop there. You know what he says? <laughs> in spite of your rebellion, in spite of you not obeying, in spite of you distrusting God, guess what? God redeemed you. Remember that. And then he says at the very end, you know what he says? Go and tell this to the next generation. Tell the next generation that my fathers rebelled, but my fathers didn't trust me enough. But tell them also that God redeemed them. Folks, you and I have, not, have been redeemed by God, not because we have done the right thing. Just keep this very important this is very very important for all of you who are sitting down here and listening to me god does not god has redeemed you and me not because but god has redeemed me in spite of my disobedience isn't it true yeah if when i look at my life if you come to cathedral in chennai and ask about me people will give you give you glorious report of how this kid was an amazing kid but only I knew how terrible I was before God. God didn't wait for me to get my act together. God redeemed me when I was deep in that place. That's exactly what Moses says. God redeemed you not because you were obedient. God redeemed you even when you were disobedient. And that's why Paul so beautifully says in Romans, isn't it? Who can separate us from this love of God in Jesus Christ? Nothing. Not even anything, even depths or heights or nothing can separate us. And that's the God whom you and I worship this evening. God has redeemed you and me. Not because, but in spite of it. Tell your children about that. And tell your children to tell their children. Because guess folks, discipleship is just not about relational. It's generational. You and I have a task to do. You and I have a costly call. You can either sit down and not do anything about it, or you can go out and tell what God has done in your life. Amen. I'm going to pray with you. I'm just going to pray and 
you can tell God. You can tell God, God, I, I just stand before you this evening. I know my kids, I just want to offer them to you this morning, this evening, and I want to commit them to your care and keeping, oh God. I want to tell them how amazing you have been. I want to tell them, oh God, that you have redeemed me, not because, but in spite of it. And you are looking for disciples who will pass on this faith. God, today I sit down, everyone in this place is sitting down here is because somebody had shared that faith with them. Maybe it's a Sunday school teacher, maybe it's a friend, or maybe a vacation Bible school teacher. And today you and I have come to know the Lord Jesus because somebody took the time to share it with you. And now it's your task to go and share this God with somebody. Don't let this responsibility slip away. Don't let this responsibility slip away because if we do it, if we don't do it, the kingdom stays here. But if you and I take the courage to share this faith with our children and to our children's children and to somebody whom God will bring our way, they might not be our own, but God will bring our way. And if we can share, this faith begins to move on. And God is looking for more people like that. And if you will say yes in the quietness of your heart, I'm just going to pass here. If you will say in the quietness of your heart, God, I want to do something about my faith and I want to share it. Guess what? This week or in the coming months, God will open up doors for you to share this faith. Say to God, if you have prayed that prayer, if you had said, God, I want to do this, God will take you seriously. God will do amazing things through your life and in mine. And to that, God, we come at each one of you and we pray a blessing over you. May God give you the courage. May God give you the strength to make this kingdom move. God, we thank you for the opportunity that you gave us this evening. We love you. We bless you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.